So we'll usually uh, get started maybe um, a couple minutes after uh, six. So just okay. hang, hang tight. No problem. Hey, Logan, can you let me share for a second? Sure. I want to check the like the slides thing because it seems to, I think I need to present first oh, yeah. and then share, I think. Uh, I just make everybody co-host, I think. <laughs> that fixes it. How panelists to start video. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, I found the I found the button. It's different for webinars. Okay. Oops, I gotta try to get back to you. Okay, share. Okay, this says it's gonna stop your screen sharing. Let me just oh yeah. Uh, go ahead then. Okay. Okay, so you see full screen without like sidebars and stuff. Yep, yep. Uh, well, I mean, there's a top top uh, URL bar, but yeah, yeah, URL is fine. Okay. All right. Cool. cool. Yeah. Okay. Hey Dave, uh, so Zoom webinar um, uh, has this polling feature. <laughs> uh, we we tested it last month and it w was pretty okay, but uh, I think it um, it pops up uh, something kind of like as you're giving the presentation. So I'm okay. wondering um, if you want to kind of like ask the audience or like during your presentation, just kind of give me a heads up or kind of like, let me know what the question is and we can do the poll if you want or, or not, um, leave it to the end or something. But okay. that, that is an option. Okay, we can leave it off until the end. Sounds good. These days it's kind of dangerous to do polls. Yeah, well, the, the webinar is a pretty controlled experience. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it'll be, uh, um, you know, fairly safe uh, for feedback and uh, unintentional feedback, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. 
So where, where are you two based? I am in Austin. Austin, cool. What yep. part? Um, up by uh, the Devane, sort of, uh, north, mm -hmm. north Austin. Um, yeah. My uh, wife has a best friend from college who lives off of Monchaca, and her cousin lives up on top of um, um, one of the mountains over Lake Travis. So both prime real estate these days. Awesome. Yeah, there's uh, lots of good parts of uh, Austin. That's probably your speaker. It was doing the other call. Oh, you don't think it's his microphone? Yeah. All right. Now I'm logged into the correct Zim account. Yep. Yeah, we can hear you. Ian. Excellent. Speaking of Austin, hey Ian, how's it going? It's uh, it's going. I uh, just fixed some uh, build stuff, so now got a uh, thanks to some other folks got a fully dockerized build, and thanks to me fixing a errant cron job thing. Um, now my a, the base amount of time that a CI build takes is about 50 seconds. Wow, that's fast. Yeah, cool. Yeah. What's Chris uh, to keep answering Dave's question? I'm uh, Atlanta. But so what uh, what part of Atlanta exactly? Because I used to live in Lawrenceville. OK, um, well, I just moved out of Kennesaw to about 10 miles west of Marietta Square. Well, we probably don't want to give like two specific things since we're recording this like for everywhere. <laughs> you you, you yeah. say that as if you can't look up people on property. That's, that's roles. true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the information's on there. My only trouble with Atlanta is to say, yeah, I bought right off Peach Tree by Peach Tree down by Peach Center, Peach Plaza. Yeah, everything's just Peach. <laughs> But that's only like downtown in the city, though. It's not quite as crazy out in the out in the suburbs. I'm I'm well outside the perimeter. But uh, but yeah, that's always the the running joke of Peachtree, something. Actually, now I, now I say that though, I re, I just realized I remember the subdivision I moved into. There's basically one street name, but it's Street Trace, Street Walk, Street Drive, Street Way, Street Terrace. So it's it's I just contradicted myself, but it's not, it's not a peach tree. It's not the name of the streets in here, but, uh, there things. <clears throat> wasn't there a, like a, uh, peach tree accounting or something? Uh, or like, does it, is that still a thing? I think there's peach County. I think. No, accounting. Oh, accounting. A, 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 oh yeah. Accounting yeah. Yeah. Software. Peach yeah. Tree yeah. County, yeah. And that was one of the packages where the, everyone bought it and then they wanted it customized and realized didn't like it and then just went back to do everything by hand. <laughs> yeah, or QuickBooks or something. <laughs> Seems like Intuit take, took over the world. Yep. I suppose I should put the slide back up. How about that? I think it still shows like the person who's speaking their face. Uh, yeah, like in the upper right hand corner or something. Yeah. I'm gonna hop over on to uh, YouTube and make sure that the chat there is monitored. Yeah, but oh yeah, I'm, I'm signed in on that account. Uh, but okay. Come here, boo. It's the chat's working. My my dog wanted to make sure that she gets seen. Hi, boo. Yeah. Oh, you got to turn on your camera if you're wanting to show everybody. Oh, start video. Yep. There we go. Come on, boo. 
Show everybody. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I was uh, doing a presentation earlier and she uh, jumped in the chair behind me and it looked like she was just looking over my shoulder the entire time. So <laughs> your supervisor, my supervisor, supervisor dog, you know, so that's what supervisor D stands for. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Your sister's been on the video. Now you need to be there, huh? Oh, you got two dogs. Uh, huh? Oh, yeah. My office managers. Oh. Yeah. Well, well, give us a couple more minutes here and, and we'll get started. I feel like we should have like background music or open discussion. How about, we, how about like open discussion time? That could be go a play thing. That, uh, go play that keyboard real quick, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we need some, some, uh, some music or something. It's like, uh, what, what language do you love to um, say is really annoying and why is JavaScript? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Oh, uh, I discovered this thing that's like years old that a bunch of JavaScript people already know about. I think it's super cool. Have you guys heard of PNPM? No. PNPM? It's, it's sort of like yarn, but it works better. <laughs> so, so, so does that mean that it's up to like Composer 1.0 levels? Uh, I, so now that two is, uh, firmly on the way. Well, I mean, two is technically stable-ish. I have not done a deep dive on the logic on uh, the de dependency resolving, but uh, it's really, really fast. Um, the, the main thing that it does is it creates, uh, so, so kind of how it works, the, the one piece that I do know is, um, so it'll download a copy of the, the node module and then symlink to all the places that depend on it. So you're not down, downloading the same node module like 10,000 times. I think it's it, like a fork of it, it, the NPM? Uh, no, it, it uses the same package.json. It just it's similar to how yarn works um, and it, it creates a separate lock file. Um, so you don't wanna like obviously have multiple lock files in your project. I don't know why we're talking about, I, I should probably <laughs> not like <laughs> continue welcome talking about JavaScript. On this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Merge.js. My cat likes to bother me. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're on a meeting. It's time for attention. You know, I think he's trained. <laughs> well, five after, I think we should probably get started here. Um, I don't know who wants to go first. Bobby, you want to go first this time? I could go first. Sounds good. Figure out how to share. Oh, I don't have uh, screen sharing. Ah, that, that would help. Uh, all right. Make everyone co hosts. <laughs> CHMOD R 777. Yeah. Go wrong. Uh, 
Okay, so then stop sharing and now you should be able to. Yes, no? I think so. Oh, it's telling me I gotta open system preferences. All right. Fancy people with Catalina actually having the same sort of user account controls that they made fun of Vista for having years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we start. So if someone else wants to go first, go for it, and I'll I'll jump in after. I gotta restart. Okay. All right. We'll see you in a minute or two. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, well, uh, I, I guess I'll I'll go. Um, so Austin PHP, we, we we got started in two thousand two. Uh, I'd like to say we're the, the longest running tech group here in Austin. Um, and we, we used to have two meetings a month, but uh, now, now it's just down to the one merge PHP. We're, we're, we're going to keep doing this thing as long as we can. I think it's a great idea, uh, the virtual conferencing stuff. So um, we, uh, back in 2011, we started a project, uh, Austin Tech Videos, and we just go around to all the meetups in Austin and and record the videos. Uh, uh, so there's a pretty extensive archive, um, maybe a little dated now, but uh, um, you can find Austin Tech videos on YouTube. Um, at, you know where where we're streaming right now. So hello YouTube, <laughs> um, but uh, it's AustinTechVideos.com uh, as well. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I, I've been an organizer. Uh, for about a decade or so. Um, we've got a good, good group here in Austin. Um, and uh, we, we do a conference every year. Uh, you may have heard of Longhorn PHP. Um, uh, and I am going to cede part of my time over to Ian so that he can, he can give us an update on Longhorn. Yep, so uh, given the current situation, uh, we have decided to push Longhorn into May of next year. We're still planning on having a, uh, an in-person conference here uh, at the uh, Holly Inn Midtown, um, just a little bit down the road. Um, however, we're waiting on that until uh, folks agree that it is actually safe for 200 folks to come together and uh, learn about PHP and PHP adjacent topics. Tickets uh, at the Blind Bird rate are uh, on sale, and the uh, CFP is open until uh, toward the end of the year. If you have any questions, go to longhornphp.com, uh, or you can at mention us on Twitter. We're Longhorn PHP there. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Ian. Um, well, uh, Chris, you, you want you want to go next? Sure. Um, <clears throat> let me share real quick and find my account again. Sorry, one second, something. There we go. All right. Um, well, I'm the Atlanta PHP component of this uh, menagerie here. Uh, as Logan kind of mentioned, we've been running since uh, 2004 ourselves. So one of the older older ones in the country, I think. Um, just want to mention, uh, run through our sponsors really quickly. Oop. Uh, Variux.com. Uh, David Edmondson, I think, is here uh, as, a, as a participant. Uh, Magento, really good Magento consulting shop local to us. So if you're interested in Magento uh, integration needs, uh, you can talk to David. Uh, appreciate his sponsorship of our, of our video archive. Our videos run not quite as long as Logan's uh, back to about 2012. So that, uh, and we'll have a, we'll show you, I'll get you a link to that in, in a bit. Also, just want to mention uh, Shootproof, uh, my employer, and our goal level sponsor and venue sponsor as well. Um, Tom Thompson Technologies, a platinum level sponsor, one of our longest running sponsors. We appreciate everybody. Uh, Guild Quality, another local PHP shop here, so silver level sponsor. 
Uh, just a few things to mention. Uh, Laracon online, August 26th, coming up uh, a couple weeks. Uh, it's still, it still looks like tickets are still available. Uh, a few uh, things in Atlanta to mention. Uh, Connect.tech has been uh, pushed to October. It's a poly, polyglot conference, but a lot of good web stuff and, and uh, all kinds of things going on in that, uh, that, that conference. Uh, Longhorn was mentioned uh, next year, a new date. And also Refactor.tech here in Atlanta, another good one. Uh, again, polyglot but also really emphasizing like diversity and inclusiveness and things like that. So that's, that's, uh, I think their second, it's your second or third year. I've heard really good things about it. I haven't been able to make them, but um, it's another good conference to get to. Um, also um, our non-meetup site, atlantaphp.org. We have our, as I mentioned, our video archive and our um, Google group message forum. Um, welcome to join and post. Uh, we have job posting guidelines to follow for jobs. Uh, it's pretty low traffic. So you're not inundated with too much stuff there. Um, so I will stop sharing and let Bobby go next. You ready, Bobby? And you. Everybody hear me and see my screen? Yes, sir. Sweet. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm Bobby Cahill. I, I'm the lead organizer of Boston PHP. Um, we're located on meetup.com. That's where most, that's where we're kind of based out of. Um, we're also on Twitter at Boston PHP. We're also, we have a, a private group on Facebook and a private group on LinkedIn. Uh, so you can join us any one of those ways. We always announce all of our meetups through all four of those. Uh, we've been around since 2002. We've had 273 meetups. Not all of them have been in-person meetups. So it's probably something like 200. Um, we do a thing called virtual self-study groups. And a lot of those events were, came from that. Uh, we don't have a lot of time to talk about that right now, though, so I'm going to skip over that. Uh, 300, uh, we've had, we have about 3,851 members. That's the number was the last time I checked. Um, we're focused on education, idea sharing, and open source. So all of our events tend to be around these things. Uh, we do these through different ways. We, in, we used to do in-person meetups. Hopefully someday we'll be able to do those again. Uh, Self-study groups which is the virtual self-study group I was talking about. Uh, you can, I'll, I'll show you how to contact me later if you wanna ask about that, if you're interested in learning like a link, like PHP or some similar technology. Uh, and now we do virtual meetups as well. And if you wanna get a hold of us, you can go to the meetup page, uh, which is meetup.com slash boss PHP, or, and uh, you can message uh, myself or Gene Babin, he's uh, both, of, both of us, uh, Gene runs the virtual self-study groups and I basically handle everything else. Um, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, we're really happy to have you, really happy to have Dave here to talk about MySQL. That's it for me. Awesome, thanks Bobby. I, I like the, the virtual meetup uh, new yeah. sticker there. That, 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 was a, that was a nice yeah. touch. <laughs> Well, cool. Uh, I guess um, let me, um, oh, uh, one order of business, I think, before we kind of get into Dave's intro stuff. Um, so uh, removing the Zoom registration requirement for September. Uh, so we want to try something new uh, to make it easier on everyone next month. Um, so if you've already registered on, meet, uh, on Zoom, uh, you won't have to use that info again in September. It'll just be like a, not a regular Zoom link, but similar to a Zoom link. You'll click on it and then you'll join as an attendee. Um, so we think this will be an easier way for people to, to get into to Zoom. Um, the, the only caveat is um, since there's no registration requirement, well, I guess there's a couple of caveats, um, but since there's no registration requirement, Zoom may fill up. And then if that's the case, you guys will need to join 
uh, the, the stream on YouTube. Um, so we're going to experiment with that um, next month and see how it goes. Uh, I guess the second caveat that we're unsure about without actually trying this <laughs> is you may have, and if we go back to the registration process, you may have to re-register. Uh, but in, in the spirit of making things easier, easier for everyone, I think, you know, we're all in agreement uh, that, um, uh, that it's worth, worth a shot. Uh, worth trying. So um, it'll slight, just be aware September uh, is going to be slightly different, but uh, hopefully easier. So uh, definitely give us feedback um, or your organizers feedback uh, on how it goes next month. And I'm sure we'll talk about it again uh, then. But um, that was the heads up for next month. I didn't forget, guys. <laughs> we talked about it like three weeks ago, and I didn't forget. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share the slide. Uh, Chris, are you ready to do the intro? Sure. Okay. Well, we'd uh, certainly like to welcome Dave Stokes, uh, MySQL Community Manager. If if I understand correctly, he's been the Community Manager since the original days of MySQL, pre Oracle and pre Sun. If I, I think that's correct, you can correct me, Dave. Um, he's a frequent conference speaker. I've seen him a few times at things like PHP Tech and and other other places. Um, he's a, a book author as well. And um, we're just excited to have him here. Uh, feel free to add any more to that, Dave. Okay. Or, yeah. <clears throat> Let me uh, share my screen. All right. And there we go. Well, actually, I was hired originally by MySQL in uh, 2007 as a PHP programmer, believe it or not. Uh, I was in the certification group. I had actually um, taken the MySQL 5.0 uh, DBA certification. And back then it was a two exam to get the certification deal. And I had passed the first one with flying colors and I missed the second attempt, my first attempt at the second exam by one point. And I uh, started writing a uh, complaint email and also so they had a job opening. So I wrote this wonderful email that's half complaint, half please hire me. And believe it or not, they did. Um, uh, ironically, before that, my career, um, I've always worked either for universities that didn't have money or on projects where the money's already been spent. So I've always been trying to do stuff on open sourcing before it was called open source. And uh, back in about 95, 96, I was working for the American Heart Association and this crazy Finnish guy was giving away an operating system called Linux and uh, two pieces of software showed up at about the same time. One was called MySQL, which was a free database. Uh, before that, the only free database you had other than the Berkeley database, which was actually a NoSQL document store uh, mismatch, was something called MSQL out of Australia. And this new thing showed up out of Scandinavia called MySQL. Must be better because it has one more letter in the name. So went for that. And about the same time I was looking for a templating engine, this guy named Rasmus Lerdorf put out something called Personal Homepage, which became PHP. So for the past 25 years, that's kind of the highlighted summary of, uh, of my career. And uh, this evening, or this morning, this afternoon, depending where you are, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the newer features in MySQL 8 and some stuff that I suppose we might see uh, later on in the future. Uh, by the way, if you need to get a hold of me, I have my contact information later. And yes, the slides are available if you want to go out and get them. And if you have any questions, I'll uh, try to monitor the Q&A as much as I can. And I'll see how it goes. I don't know if you can see the red dot as I circle my mouse. That yeah, is, we can. Uh, um, this is about the 20th one of these I've done in two months. And I've learned that I need that out there. <laughs> well, well, nice. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to go ahead and, and get started, uh, you know, really looking forward to this uh, this this talk here on MySQL. Um, you know, something we all know and love. Another key component uh, to the, to the Lamp stack, the original Lamp stack, I think. Um, yes. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the talk, Dave. Uh, so if you want to take it away, um, we'll we'll try to monitor the Q and A and then kind of like ask you kind of at the end since there's. The, the Zoom Q and A, and then the YouTube, and and so we'll kind of direct questions to you uh, at the end. Okay. Uh, first thing I go to is everything I'm talking about today 
is on the free open source GPL version two community edition of MySQL. You can download. Uh, if I mention anything about the enterprise edition during Q and A or go off on a tangent, I'll tr try to uh, delineate that. However, um, Oracle wants you to know that if I start during the Q and A talking about something that's not an official product yet, something that you can't download today, uh, take what I say with a grain of salt because I don't have perfect knowledge of what's in the future. And plus, because of my imperfect knowledge, I might say something's blue. I'm thinking this color blue. You're thinking uh, navy blue and ends up being blue cheese. So be warned there. Okay, those of you who are running MySQL 5.6 on February 5th, 2021, it reaches end of life status. So if you're running 5.6 or earlier, please upgrade. Uh, hopefully to version 8.0. It's been out for two and a quarter years now, almost two and a half years. Um, if you if you really need to stick with 5.6 for some reason, uh, I hate to tell you, but the world is moving away from you. Uh, about me, um, I mentioned that I started using MySQL when it first came available and my uh, background with open source. Uh, mentioned earlier that I was a PHP programmer when they hired me in at MySQL AB. I've gone through the MySQL AB to Sun Microsystems to Oracle uh, transition. I left for a short time to go to a startup called CalPont, which had an, a columnar storage engine uh, that's uh, available out with one of the other open source databases you want to get there. Uh, for about a decade, I've been with the MySQL community team, which is where I've been going out to all the conferences and talking to you folks, and hopefully we'll be doing that again. Uh, I have the MySQL 8.0 DBA and developer certification. So if you have any questions about those, let me know. Uh, as many of you saw earlier, you saw my hound dog and my other dog, and I live in North Texas, uh, above Fort Worth. And you can't see it out the window, but I do have a pickup truck. And my slides for this talk and a whole bunch of others are at that address, slideshare.net slash David M. Stokes. Or there's also another one that I keep trying to keep parallel called Dave Stokes, but David M. Stokes is the, the main one. Okay, agenda. Um, I hate having a rigorous agenda because especially these days where I can't see your faces and I can't see you when you get puzzled looks. Uh, it, it helps me that if you have questions, uh, I'd love to hear them shouted out, love to uh, have you do that. So as best we can, we'll try to uh, keep this as free flowing as we can. So if you have questions, uh, please ask them. Uh, if you're shy, my contact information will be up later, but don't be shy. These folks here are your community and they're here to support you. And believe me, if you think your question sounds dumb, um, it's probably something that somebody's already asked and someone also know, can answer it for you. So uh, never be shy around a PHP group. And like I said, let's try to make this as interactive as possible. And uh, at the end, I'd kind of like to see uh, what you folks need that we don't have yet in MySQL. Uh, something we might be able to do for the second half of the calendar year, maybe uh, the next year. So with MySQL 8.0, we went to the CI CD bandwagon that a lot of people have gone on. Uh, in the old days, it took us years to get new features in the MySQL. It was slow, it was costly, customers didn't like us um, just because it was too, too slow. And plus over the past uh, 10 years, uh, you guys know how the learning curve for PHP developers has absolutely gone nearly vertical. Uh, the, the software we're delivering today is much more complex back in the 5.5 era. Uh, the man who runs our QA team uh, lives outside of San Marcos, Texas. And he can tell you how they've gone from a few hundred QA tests every day to 100,000 QA tests every day. Uh, it is amazing how complex the software is. A lot of the new features we're adding are in the form of a shared object that you use as a plugin. Uh, this allows us to quickly develop stuff. And if you don't like it, you just uninstall the shared object and away you go. You can do that live while the system's running or the instance running. Now for us, this gives us a approved ability to improve the product. Uh, we get a bright inspiration or someone in the community gives us uh, an idea or contributes code. We're able to quickly prototype it uh, debug it, test it out, run it through QA and get it out into the world. Also, this gives us better coordination between our various components, uh, the new MySQL shell, uh, InnoDB cluster, router, 
uh, the various backup tools. Uh, by the way, the shell has two new backup tools that work very, very, very quickly and are amazingly fast. And you might want to look into those. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think we have a much better product than we had years ago. Uh, lots of engineering rigor that uh, we, uh, we've added to the product. Oracle was very interested in us when they took us over, but they thought our engineering uh, could have been a little better done. And hopefully uh, you agree with us that it is a lot better than it was. So what version of MySQL do I run? Well, in the old days, um, if you're running MySQL 5.7, you might be running uh, 6.2 of the ODBC connector with MySQL Enterprise Backup 5.4. It got real confusing. So we decided that, okay, uh, easiest thing to do is go out and grab everything at once, go out and grab the latest and greatest. And as of July, our latest is 8021. Uh, you can go out there and you can download uh, the binaries for your particular platform. Uh, we're out there uh, with Docker images. Uh, if that's not good enough, we even have the source code out there. So we have um, the gen generic server that everyone's used to. Uh, NDB cluster, if you have a cell phone, uh, this is what the cell phone companies all use to track you as you move between cell tower and cell tower. This is also what a lot of the big, massive online games use to keep track of how many goats you've roped and all that sort of thing. And it's also used by the US Navy for carrier flight operations. Uh, MySQL Shell is an interesting tool. It's our new command line. It is not monochromic anymore. It has a wonderful help option. It has a Python interpreter, 3.0, and a JavaScript uh, interpreter. So if you have utilities with those or libraries with those uh, languages, you can use them to work with your data. Plus it also speaks SQL, uh, has utilities for things like backups, upgrade checking, and a whole bunch of other neat stuff. Uh, we also have MySQL Workbench, which is our GUI, MySQL Router, which is a level four proxy. Uh, you set up your application to talk to MySQL Router. It knows how to load balance stuff with MySQL NODB cluster. Plus we have all the connectors out there for all the languages that you love. So let's take a look at the community server and yes, it is still free. Uh, every so often I, I see something out there on the internet where someone's saying that Oracle's charging for the community edition. Nope. So I'm gonna go backwards in time uh, through some of the editions of MySQL 8.0. Uh, like I said, last July, we came out with 8021. Uh, these are some of the features that I thought are the more eye-catching or the ones that developers want to hear about. Um, user details for accounts, JSON value, uh, being able to turn off the redo log, uh, some stuff on the Docker containers that now support uh, a better restart. And uh, our group replication has a better auto rejoin feature feature that automatically, if a machine has dropped out of the cluster and comes back, uh, it knows how to get into the cluster easier. User details. Uh, if you've done Linux admin or admin on some other operating system, um, in the Unix world, it's called the GCOS field. But uh, previously in MySQL, there was no way to really sh uh, figure out. If you have two guys named Dave, which never happens, uh, believe it or not, um, it was kind of harder. It, well, is this Dave from accounting or Dave from IT or Dave from the loading dock? Um, this is a, uh, a, a great way to be able to say, okay, we can put in a comment, which is also an alias for attribute, and you put in details about the account. Um, very handy, lets you know exactly who is using what account. Uh, you can put in all sorts of information out there. JSON value, this is uh, mainly used for uh, setting up indexes off JSON uh, information. I'll go into multi-value indexes uh, later, but also has some other interesting things and lets you cast JSON values the way you need it. Uh, in this example, uh, I was trying to do some calculations on countries with, with uh, greater than 80 year life expectancy and the real value that we had in the data, uh, it was kind of crazy because the first time I ran it without uh, returning decimal, uh, it was like 80.14333456. I had no idea what that was. So I figured, well, let's do 0.1 and see how it comes up. 
Uh, JSON value is great for casting uh, various information you're pulling out of a JSON data type. Uh, the redo logging, this is a big one for those of you who are uh, moving instances between servers. Uh, in the past, if you were restoring to a old server or uh, bringing up a new server, uh, a lot of the overhead that kept slowing down your restoration of the data was the redo log. The redo log is how the server keeps track of what's going on in transactions. So if anything goes wrong and you plug the stuff from the redo log back into the server and you can roll back transactions that you don't wanna commit to. Okay, back in April, uh, we did a lot more on hash joins. I'll go into hash joins in, the, in another release. Uh, binary log transaction compression. Uh, very interesting there. And we came out with a better CATS algorithm. I'll, uh, let me go into the CATS uh, first. A couple of years ago, the University of Michigan had an academic paper that uh, caught the attention of our engineers. It was how to speed up uh, transactions. Basically, if you have a hot row or hot column in a table and a lot of folks are trying to get to it, uh, there's a whole bunch of ways of how you service those requests. And to boil down a very long academic paper into one sentence is basically you feed the greediest request first. It goes away, unplugs everything, gets rid of deadlocks, and things go through faster. Well, we've been working on their algorithm. They've been working on their algorithm. And in last April, we came out with a better version. This switches on automatically, so you don't have to worry about turning it on yourself. So the binary log transaction compression. Uh, as you're replicating from one server to another, uh, the primary server writes the changes to its data to a log file. The replicas come through, grab that information and apply that to its own copy of the data. That way the two machines stay equivalent. Well, those logs can get rather nasty and kind of long. So people were asking for compression. So we gave the ability to compression with ZSTD, a very handy. And then we realized, well, we don't have to compress, uncompress, and all that the thing. So right now, your primary will write it in a compressed format. Your replica will grab that in a compressed format and read the compressed format and apply the changes. So there's no uncompression of the data. Okay, way back in January, gee, we're never going into stores without wearing a mask. It still freaks me out when I go into my bank with a mask on. I, living in Texas, that's kind of scary. Uh, we're gonna talk about too many login attempts, um, some statements to get better with the SQL standard. And let's go into login attempts. Uh, if you have someone trying to hammer your accounts on your database server, uh, my first question is usually why is your MySQL uh, server exposed to the internet or a wide area network or something where you can't control the traffic to it. But what you can do now is create a user account or alter user account and say, okay, after three failed login attempts, we're going to lock the password for three days. Uh, if you need better granularity in the days, let me know. I'd love to put in a feature request on that. Um, hopefully that's uh, something that somebody else has, has, has logged. Uh, the bottom example here, we have after four failed login attempts, the pass, the account is locked. Unbounded means that someone who's a DBA or has similar powers is going to come, going to have to come in and unlock the account. Tables and rows. Uh, if you've uh, heard the database war stories over the years, especially open source world wars, uh, everyone's saying, well, my favorite database handles the SQL standard better than others. Well, the SQL standard, if you've ever read it, can be kind of innocuous and weirdly phrased. And there's a lot of stuff left, left out there for guessing. Now, the, the two statements in blue at the top of the screen, table T order by C, uh, that's the same thing as select from T order by C. Uh, table replaces the select asterisk. And uh, it's, one of those things where I was looking at this going, well, MySQL world doesn't use a lot of this, but a lot of other databases are used to doing that. Now, the second set of blue lines you see there is you now have the row word option. Uh, so you, those two lines there are equivalent. Does it really help uh, most developers in the PHP world? 
No, but folks coming from other databases who are uh, working with MySQL, they're expecting to see that out there. And of course, it brings us better to, to standards compliance. Alias on dupl duplicate keys. Uh, I know one person in the audience has bitten by this before. Uh, in the past, um, the, the bottom statement there is what you had to do. If you're in trying to insert data into the database and that key was already there, uh, you don't want to override it. You actually want to start a new record for that. So you had to play with the values keyword to do something. Well, that was kind of cumbersome. And we had a suggestion to use something similar to what you see in triggers with the new keyword or the old keyword. Uh, this makes it a little bit easier that if you uh, are collecting data and might run into duplicate primary keys to work around that. Way back in October, uh, we introduced a whole bunch of interesting features, random passwords, explain, analyze, hash joins, uh, some compression options. And we started with the enterprise version to be able to support the HashiCorp vault uh, for the at rest encryption. So if you want to use at rest encryption and uh, for some reason don't want to use the Oracle Enterprise uh, key manager, which is the Oracle audit vault, you can actually use HashiCorps. Random password. Uh, for many years, MySQL has had the ability that if uh, you want to have complex passwords, you can say how complex they are, how long, how many mixed characters, how many special characters, uh, that sort of thing. Well, it's a little bit easier to have your database um, do that if that's what the rules are to generate passwords. And as you can see here, we've issued a create user command and the server goes out and creates the user and returns the generated password for you for capture. Hash joins. Uh, in the past, MySQL has been known for running equijoins. That's where you uh, get two tables and you kind of have the equal sign there and they uh, you plug them together and you loop from one to the other. Uh, hash joins is where you basically hash everything together. In light blue, the uh, vertical columns, there are the traditional, um, or the brand new hash joins. And in the orange, you have our traditional branch and loop. And as you can see, for most instances, the hash join is much faster. Uh, if it can, MySQL's optimizer will turn that on for you. And in 8.20, or two releases ago, we added anti, semi, and outer hash joins. And uh, I'll show you later how to tell if you're actually getting those type of joins. Explain, analyze. In the past, if you tried to optimize a query using explain, uh, if you haven't ever run, done that before, what you do is you type explain and you prepend it to your query. And without analyze, what happens is the optimizer takes a look at the options that uh, you're running, what columns you want to grab, how you want to grab them, uh, how you want to match up two tables, that sort of stuff, and figures out the permutations to get your data in the cheapest way possible. Well, the estimates that came back to you with was a guesstimate from the onboard stored statistics. Well, the onboard store statistics are good, but they're historical. And it's kind of like having a GPS in your car. Uh, for instance, if I want to go to the local taco stand, left out of the driveway, right at the end of the street, another left-hand turn in the taco stands right past the railroad tracks. But that's my historical information. I somehow didn't know that my neighbor blocked off the street. I didn't know there's a train uh, blocked across the, the uh, railroad tracks. And I don't know that the, that the uh, taco stand was uh, taken away later, earlier today. Now explain analyze with the keyword here, it actually takes your query and it runs it and it comes back with the actual information on what it takes to get to your data. So I recommend using explain analyze over general explain just because it does run the query where the traditional explain does not and it gives you real information about what's going on. Okay, way back over a year ago, uh, multi-valued indexes, uh, document validation, uh, dual passwords, the clone plugin, and a, uh, another collation for faster sorts. Okay, multi-valued indexes. Traditionally with MySQL, if you were creating an index, it was a one-to-one -one relationship. One entry in the index for one entry or one row in a table. 
Uh, that worked pretty good until we started playing with JSON data where you could have JSON arrays with multiple options or multiple uh, records. Uh, so like you're making a car and you have all the part numbers in there, you want to be able to index those back to the, to the one record. So multi-value indexes are a secondary index defined on a column made up of an array of values. Uh, personal testing is until you get about 20 million values out there. I'm talking about integers. Um, it, the, there's really kind of a trade-off depending on how your data is laid out and doesn't really do that. Above 20 million records, this really, really sings, really makes your queries very quick. JSON document validation. Uh, if you have a subscription to PHP Architect, and of course you all do, uh, my um, article on that came out this month. I was interviewed earlier today by the folks who run uh, their podcast on this. Um, JSON's wonderful, but it's generally considered schemaless. And if you're storing a bunch of stuff in JSON, there's really no easy way to imply or inf have rigor on your data. Well, what, am I, what do you mean by that, Dave? Well, JSON doesn't have the things you find traditionally in relational databases uh, because it's not tightly uh, typed to the, to the schema. So if you want something like um, a required value, a, a type check, a range check, you can't do that. Uh, what you can do is use a function uh, JSON schema valid, where you pass it an exemplar document. And in this case, we're saying, okay, we're going to have an object. It's going to be called my age, and it's going to be a number. And the minimum age is 28, maximum is 99, and it's required. If you try to enter in a document that is under the minimum or over the maximum, you get this wonderful error, sir, error, error check constraint. Alex Stokes or Stokes. And, uh, uh, the data doesn't get into your database. It is much cheaper and easier to keep bad data out of your database than to let it in there and have to go fix it later. Uh, no, contrary, if you have another record that comes in and it fits within the parameters, it's there. Uh, the great thing about required is you can make sure that you're getting all the data that you need into your database. So if someone's trying to enter a JSON document that doesn't have my age in there, it won't get into your database. Uh, something that's also great is uh, a lot of things I've seen in the past is you have a programming team and one developer is saving email is all lowercase e-m-a-i-l. Uh, someone might camel case it. Some may snake case it. Someone might do it e-mail. Uh, this way you can add consistency to your data. Dual passwords. Uh, first time I saw this in the documentation, I was thinking, why would you want that? And then it hit me. Um, in this example here, we're going to alter a username Dave and identified by a new password called Dear Dave 2 and we're going to retain the current password. Now I can log in with the old password or I can log in with the password of Dear Dave 2 uh, Imagine your, your boss's boss comes to you and said, hey, we've had a security problem. We want to go out and change the password on all our applications, all 840 of them. Uh, rather than firing up Emacs or whatever you use uh, to go out and uh, hit star.php, what you can do is set up the secondary password and move the new uh, password into your application as needed. Uh, test it out, make sure everything's great. And when you're all done with the old pa password, you basically uh, alter user, discard old password. So this gives you some flexibility to transition over to a new password. Uh, back in April of last year, um, one of the better things we did is got rid of the MySQL upgrade script. Uh, all the time on things like uh, Quora and Stack Overflow, some would say, I just upgraded my MySQL and I'm getting notices about these columns not being there, what's going on? Well, it used to be every time you upgraded the binary, you had you're supposed to run MySQL upgrade to make sure that the metadata was updated. And a lot of folks forgot to do that. So our engineers figured out a way how to have when the server starts up, it checks the meta, metadata level and adjusts it properly. Uh, constraint checks, you saw an example of that earlier. We'll, we'll uh, go into that. It used to be for constraint checks. Uh, we had the code there, but uh, didn't execute it. 
Uh, we've changed our C API and all the uh, connectors that are based off the C API to support asynchronous non-blocking communications. Then we have another explained format, this one's tree. Uh, constraint checks, uh, very handy. Uh, once again, it's easier to keep bad data out than to fix uh, bad data later. Uh, we're creating here a table called T1. And our first check we have is called C1 is not equal to C2. I have a second one where C1 is greater than 10. Now let me draw your eye to this one, uh, constraint two. And we actually name it C2 underscore positive and we're checking to make sure C2 is greater than zero. Why am I showing you this? Well, believe me, it helps to name your constraints because otherwise it will just say constraint check number one failed, constraint check number two failed. Uh, if you have it uh, named, it's a lot easier to track down and know exactly what's going on. Uh, in this example, C1 non-zero, very easy uh, to actually track that down. Uh, this one, check C1 greater than C3. Uh, you got that one tossed an error, it'd be kind of hard for you to scratch your head and track down. Okay, way back to the beginning of last year, uh, we had an administrative TCP IP port. Uh, doesn't count on the number of uh, outstanding connections. Uh, you only shut off all the other users from using the server. And uh, you have this wonderful admin port. Uh, we redid our JSON array aggregation and object aggregation so that you can work with windowing functions. Uh, windowing functions let you do analytics on groups of, of rows within a data set. Uh, we added set persist and set persist only. Uh, those are rather handy in that uh, if you have multiple people administering an instance and I make a change on uh, Sunday, Chuck makes a uh, change on Wednesday and Ian makes a change on Friday and for some reason things goes down on Saturday, uh, those changes are lost. But if you prepend set persist, it actually puts it out there in a little configuration file. It's the last thing read as the system comes up and you actually save those changes. And lateral derived tables, let me show you that. Uh, in the past, subqueries were rather nasty. And in 8.0, we added common table expressions, which makes it easier to write uh, subqueries. And I highly recommend them over the standard subqueries. But a lot of good subqueries are out there. Now, my troubles when I was writing subqueries is I'd always get the uh, more than one, uh, subquery returns more than one row and couldn't reference stuff from outside. What we're doing here is using the keyword lateral to say, okay, all this here, we're gonna to refer to as X, which gives the outer query the ability to go out and grab that information. Very handy, uh, speeds up coding. Okay, going back to uh, two years ago, April, uh, we've made a lot of changes. The big change was put all the metadata inside the database, and that's called the data dictionary. Uh, in the past, if you've gone under var lib mysql, you've seen a whole bunch of myis, frms, myis, mids, uh, kind of messy. Now all that is in stored in InnoDB. InnoDB is pretty good at, at checkpoint uh, time and point recovery. So all that is in the database. The side effect of that is we're not showing up your inodes and it also allows you to have millions of tables within a schema. Uh, the downside there is you now have millions of tables within a schema. Uh, the only person I know who's really pushed this um, got up to about 22 million tables in a schema and got bored. So I don't know what the upper limit truly is, but uh, if you can't do it in 22 million tables, I don't know what you're doing. Histograms are an option. Uh, instead of indexing stuff, uh, you can put a histogram, which is kind of like, okay, A to B sit in this row, C to D sit in this row. So the optimizer has a better idea where your data is. Uh, it's not for churning churning data, it's for fairly static data, but it does give your uh, optimizer a better chance of getting to your historical data and knowing uh, the cost so it could give you a better way to process your data. Resource groups lets you dedicate certain virtual CPUs for classes of, of uh, queries. So if you have a low priority batch queue, uh, you can put a comment in your query, it says uh, resource group equals batch, and the optimizer knows where to throw it. I mentioned cats earlier. Uh, improved our JSON support, uh, added JSON table, which lets you temporarily take your unstructured JSON data and turn it into a structured table. Everything's optimized around UTF-8 MB4. Why? Well, we're doing stuff all over the world and we need to support for all 
four panes in the Unicode, Unicode uh, version nine uh, table set. And plus everyone wants emojis in their data. Uh, we improved our NODB cluster, which is our high availability, high available uh, clustering option, uh, which can work in multi uh, primary mode. Uh, we've improved our NoSQL API, uh, which if you haven't played with, it's really, in really interesting. Uh, to start using it, you don't have to set up relations and tables, just connect to a, a server, get into the schema you want and start saving documents in a document connect connection collection. Uh, better, better, faster, temporary table engine. In the past, if you were using the old uh, temp engine and it reached a certain size, it would call, cause a halt, copy all that data over to InnoDB and restart. That was costly and slow. Uh, new temporary storage engines between 10 and 20% faster. And plus we did a lot to uh, give you better performance. So with the 8.0, we've, we've done a lot of things. We've got a better SQL, uh, windowing functions for analytics, common table expressions for subqueries, derived tables, constraint checks, the table row stuff. Uh, we're better at no SQL, uh, doing, trying to give you a, a more flexible data store no matter how you want to use it and you can mix and match as you want. Uh, InnoDB cluster I mentioned earlier, this is our single primary mode here. Uh, your application talks through a connector to MySQL router. Router is a very lightweight piece of code which you can keep on the same platform as your application. Router knows which machines down in the cluster is doing what. So if you've got a write, it's gonna provide it, in this case, send it to the read write primary. Uh, if it's a read, any of the three can handle it depending on how what their load is. And this is all administered by our new shell. A uh, replica set is built on top of traditional MySQL replication. It doesn't have the automatic failover that, that uh, the InnoDB cluster does, but what's really handy is it does a lot of the hard work for you in the past that you had to do when you're setting up replication by hand. I know a lot of you in the past have had to go out there and copy the data, you know, do a backup on one machine, copy it over another machine, and then look at the position of the log file on the primary and copy that over to the secondary and do start replica and all that. Uh, the, the big advantage here is a clone plugin. This is extremely way, extremely fast way to copy NODD table spaces from a donor machine to a recipient machine. I mean, this is leaving edge fast. It is uh, the way to go. Uh, matter of fact, if you're setting up InnoDB cluster for the first time, I'll ask you, uh, do you want to do things kind of in a piecemeal way of kind of copying things over as we can, or just want to go out and grab everything at once? Uh, this is a very, very uh, easy way to get up a new replica. Uh, MySQL Shell, as I mentioned earlier, is our, our CLI. Uh, great help support, has command completions, has the three modes I mentioned earlier before. Uh, has an upgrade checker and bulk loader. Let me go into the bulk loader. This used to be the bane of my existence. Um, if you start up the new shell, uh, you notice it's, it's no longer just uh, monochromatic. Uh, what's really nice is it tells you, in this case, we're running JavaScript. It's orange for SQL and it's blue for Python. Look down here we turn on TLS AES 256 by default and we set up the, the the, uh, the keys for you, if you don't have them, set up the certificates. Uh, if you don't like that or you don't need it, you can turn it off, but by default, we are secure. And with the new protocol, we're listening on port 33060 instead of our traditional 3306. And everything by default is UTF-8 MB4. Uh, to use it as a no uh, SQL database, uh, connect to the server you saw before, figure out what uh, schema or database we want to use. And here I'm using FOSDEM. And if I type in DB, it shows, shows me that I'm talking to the schema named FOSDEM. I can create a document collection here creatively called A. And I can do db.a.add, add in a JSON document and up to a gig of information. And it puts it out there for me. No having to set up relational tables, no having to set up indexes, uh, none of that stuff. Really, really quick. Uh, JSON files. When we first started with the new shell, a couple of folks wrote little uh, Python or JavaScript 
um, uh, code applets to go out there and read a line, write a line, read a line, write a line. Well, one of our engineers thought, mm, that's cute, but let's kind of formalize that. And I, he had some shortcuts. So he came up with a utility called import JSON, worked really good. I was impressed. And then they turned around and rewrote it to make it as a parallel bulk loader. So if you have JSON CSV or TSV files, um, you can run it from the command line, as you see here, and it will open up as many threads that needs to pull up your data and put it into the database very, very, very quickly. So um, got us up to speed on um, what's coming out in, in 2020. And uh, hopefully in the Q&A, we'll figure out what do you want to see in the new releases? What do you like but want to tweak up? We'll go with that. So these are my unofficial, not blessed by Oracle ideas of what you're going to see in, in 2020. Uh, well, 2020 is halfway over now or, or more than halfway over and maybe 2021. Uh, our enterprise edition will be doing a lot more with security. Um, it is uh, amazing. Your bosses are talking cloud, but they're buying security. Um, we have a um, initiative with one of the government agencies where their, their main concern is how do you keep everything that's HIPAA and PII compliant, super safe. And the original vendor they went to basically threw up their hands and said, well, we can't guarantee anything. Well, we can, thankfully. I think you're going to see a lot more improvements in our JSON support. In the past uh, releases 5.7 and 8.0, we've gone to boost.geometry for their libraries, and our GIS has gotten very, very good. Uh, in the past, we used to tell people use post GIS for anything they had to do for graphical information systems. Now I think we're just about on par, if not just um, pulling up on them. Uh, you're going to see a lot more functionality in the InnoDB cluster. Uh, we have new backup um, tools that work with that, uh, including the clone plugin. Uh, you're going to see a lot more features added in the new shell. We've been testing, I've been testing some of those extensively, very impressive. Uh, we're going through the mutexes, trying to figure out where to uh, eliminate things that are slowing things down. Once you eliminate one, you kind of stumble into the next uh, blockage. If you go out to, uh, to Twitter and follow MySQL, uh, one of our engineers has come out with a, a, a look at how he was tuning some hardware. Some of the newer hardware is kind of ticklish on the way you set the parameters for buffer size and all that. Uh, I think we're going to see more emphasis on Kubernetes-ish stuff. Uh, I'm not quite sold on Kubernetes as being the, the answer. Um, I, I'm looking for something to me that feels more than just kind of highly intelligent born scripts uh, out there. But I think you're going to see a lot more of that as more and more people go into the cloud. I also think that DBAs are going to be even harder to find, but the scope of the job is going to be much bigger. And by the way, I still think bad data architecture is the thing that's going to be start seeing as a real problem for a lot of folks. Uh, you're trying to build a data warehouse, you end up building a digital data landfill. Uh, a lot of people try to build a 100-story skyscraper on sand, and the tide washes them away. Uh, by the way, I'm working on a second edition of JSON and MySQL, a practical guide to using JSON with MySQL. I thought our documentation was a little bit uh, lacking on good examples. And uh, unfortunately, when you write a computer book, the world moves out from underneath you. So I'm trying to find a uh, publishing partner. The Oracle Press entered the relationship with their publishing partner, and we're trying to uh, find someone else. And by the way, this book seems to be on sale every other day on Amazon. So instead of making three cents a copy, I make two cents. By the way, if you want to get rich, don't write a computer book. Uh, with that, uh, here's my contact information. Uh, the slides are out at slideshare.net slash David M. Stokes. And uh, let's uh, go back to the Q&A and I'll stop my share. Awesome. There's nothing out there in the Q&A. <laughs> I answered everyone's question. Wow. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a few questions. Yes, um, sir. Uh, the, the JSON document uh, validation seems super helpful and uh, really looking forward to that. Um, what, what version was that supported in? Uh, that's that's the eight, eight, eight something? I think it was 8.0.17, but you'll have to check okay. with the documentation. Okay, cool. Um, uh, and then I, 
the the five six uh, getting deprecated was kind of news to me. Like that seems like a big deal uh, uh, for a lot of people. But um, is there like a supported versions um, page? Uh, I found like supported platforms, and, yeah. and maybe is it kind of like up to the specific platforms? Kind of like you know on you know while the like binaries are being um, built and you know like it like it. it how is that being handled like, like on a platform level or like, like across the board? Uh, across the board, February 6, 2021, no more builds of five, six from our uh, automatic code generators. Uh, there is a page out there. What I need to do is set up my own Dave's handy page for everything that's MySQL and have that up near the top. Uh, it is actually out there someplace. I, I see it all the time, but then I know how to find it. But yeah, uh, but, so, uh, it's like your handy, handy Dave links.com. Yeah, I'll have to do um, that. Uh, it, it, I, so on the supported platforms page, there's like five seven is in like light blue, and I'm wondering if is that is that like the recommended thing or is that like a marketing deal or I I have the page I could share it, but like, um, yeah. Uh, let's see if I can maybe here. Now that's the um, the the various OSs. Uh, okay. I, I think we actually do a disservice by not having it. Um, uh, here we go. That's another company's page. I found an external site that lists all the end of life yeah. dates. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we have one that for we're end of life in various um, things for like various versions of Fedora, like end of life for Windows 8 and Fedora. It, it's actually out there. I'll, I'll find it and I'll tweet it. Um, it. It's one of those things where we have it out there. We just don't have it where I want it at the time. Yeah, it's sorry to spring some random questions on you there. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, I, I think that I was looking for it and I couldn't quite find it. Looks like we do have a few Q and A in um, in the Q and A uh, section. If you would, yeah. can you the, see those? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I recently used load data in file to load a TSV into MySQL. Could that multi-threaded load process you went over work with a TSV file, or is it only support JSON? It's TSV, it's CSV, and it's JSON. So tab commas or JSON format. And uh, thank you, Jeremiah, for that question. And Nicholas writes, the intro mentioned a continuous rollout makes it harder to keep up with the changes. True. Uh, is there a good single change log features detail page I can subscribe to that itemizes the new stuff? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know of a single one. Uh, we do have our release notes out there and on planet.mysql.com, uh, or our MySQL community.slack.com. We announce when the new versions come out, but uh, we really don't have a mailing list or another way to kind of flag people to say, hey, we got a new release. <clears throat> Looks like we have a question um, on YouTube. Uh, Chris asked, uh, jumping, to the, jumping to retaining previous passwords, is there a way for seeing which users have a retained password? Uh, if you go out and you look at the additional information column of the user entry in the MySQL.user table, uh, you'll actually see in JSON the additional password. So you can go and scoop for that. I guess I had another question. So the, the uh, MySQL uh, upgrade command um, I've been using Docker containers locally uh, for for some of the you know local development to kind of make it easy to switch between versions. I'm wondering, and this is maybe like too specific, but you wouldn't happen to know like if you spin up a new Docker container with MySQL, does MySQL upgrade? Like, would it detect that hey, you're trying to you know open the new container on an old data set and then like run MySQL upgrade? 
Uh, as long as you're about MySQL, well, you're as long as you're running, I think it's eight dot zero dot twelve or or further on. Uh, when things spin up, it will realize what the version of the metadata is and actually pull that up to the latest spec for you. Cool. Uh, now, be careful there. Downgrading can get tricky. Uh, you might have to do a dump and reload everything. But so like you're running 8019 and suddenly you, you switch over to 821, you did the Docker latest and yeah. suddenly you're running 821. Uh, it will recognize that, oh, this is a slightly older format. I'm going to upgrade it. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, having different data directories uh, for like major versions, basically. Um, and then migrating, you know, out in and out of them using external tools, basically. So, yeah, sounds like it'll work. Yep. Uh, yeah, Chris says thanks uh, on, on YouTube. Well, thank you, Chris. <laughs> I, I miss seeing the people's faces and doing the hallway track at events, but until we can get back to that. Um, this, is, this is pretty good. I mean, I like the, the webinar, right? Cause you can see, you know, uh, the, the panelists faces. Yeah. Um, the, the, the crazy thing is I'm doing more of these a week. I mean, you're on the road. So you do two or three presentations at a conference, go to another conference. Um, with, with this, it's a little bit more of a load for me and my counterpart who's based in Europe. Um, like this is my third, no, this is my fourth Zoom meeting today. So <laughs> next yeah. time folks see me, my rear end will be very broad and very flat and very sore. <laughs> it, yeah, the, the weeks these days, it does seem like just one long continuous Zoom meeting, you know, is, 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 our, is our work now. Well, ironically, the guy who got caught short on that the most at Oracle is Larry Ellison. Uh, I guess he probably had like one meeting a day. It was very formal and very structured. Uh, and now he's getting sucked into Zoom meetings all the time. And he's not exactly <laughs> proud of it, even though Zoom's back end is the Oracle cloud infrastructure. Oh, but, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A easier access to, you know, is, is, uh, is maybe not such a good thing all the time. Um, you know, if you're like, well, you don't have to go anywhere, so you can just join all the things. <laughs> um, uh, Aram on, uh, in Zoom has another question. Um, do you, do you want to? Could you talk about the bulk loader? I'm always writing custom scripts to move columns around or adding data as the data is never quite in the same column format. Welcome to ETL hell. <laughs> um, when you're loading bulk data uh, that's brand new, um, it's a little bit easier. When you're adding it to stuff that's already out there, sometimes you have to do an intermediate step of moving to some, some other place before you can massage it and put it where you want to, to go. Um, moving columns around kind of implies to me that uh, you're, you're kind of in that, uh, it gets kind of nasty. Uh, the bulk loader is basically a, a simple bulk loader. It uh, you can specify the the um, the schema it's going into, the collection it's going into. If you're doing the JSON stuff, um, if you're using JSON column type, but when you're importing stuff that's always in a different format, it is just ETL hell. That's no other <laughs> no other answer for it. I wish there was. I, th I think that's uh, you know somebody's job title uh, for sure is <laughs> ETL Hell Manager. <laughs> yep. In, any any other questions? Uh, that was a very informative talk. I'm I'm looking forward you know to to getting on eight one of these days. <laughs> Well, I appreciate being here and the invitation. And whenever you need me again, let me know. I mean, I'm literally just up the digital highway from y'all in Austin. And <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, but it's a couple of hours away. So yeah. super close. Um, Aram says, uh, thanks. Thanks for answering these questions. It's like, you covered that one. <laughs> Okay, well, if that's it, everyone have a nice evening, keep safe, and hopefully next May we'll all be in Austin, and we'll all, go down, we'll all go down to Snooze AM for breakfast and get out to the Salt Lake for barbecue for dinner.
which means yeah i i, I think it's going to be a uh it, it's going to be a little random on like what restaurants are still open in may but uh you know fingers crossed that uh all, all our favorites will be will still be there we're, we're doing our part here in austin to keep things open like you know take out you know a couple nights a week the the city motto is keep austin weird which they've never had a problem with before and uh we yeah. all need to we all need to go to chewy's for a margarita and some enchiladas so yeah 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 and, and torchies uh, all sorts of i i, free, I do free birds about you know once a week so yeah keep keeping things going I, so apparently tex-mex the tex-mex stuff outside of texas is not as good who who would have thought <laughs> Like, you know, like I, I hear about all these like, oh, I went to Chewy's in Denver and it was terrible. I'm like, well, you know, maybe maybe your problem is it's in Denver. <laughs> well, one of the fir first big conferences I had to talk at was uh, my talk was scheduled against John Mad Dog Hall. And uh, anyway, I went to commiserate with him that, you know, I, I probably stole zero audience from him. And a lot of the folks that said they were going to see me wanted to see him. So afterwards, we went to North Carolina barbecue just to sample it. And I got to tell you, oh my goodness, that was horrible. Oh, oh so, yeah. <clears throat> it, it, it does vary quite a bit. The, yes. the Nashville uh, chicken is, uh, you know, there, I think there's, uh, there, we're starting to see Nashville chicken places here in Austin. There's, um, there's literally one, so it, it's the same chain, so to speak. There's one up in Cedar Park. There's one down uh, where uh, Magnolia Cafe used to be uh, down in Lake Austin. And there's one, um, let's see, maybe 150, 100 yards from where I'm sitting right now. And they have a picnic tea deal. So um, you know, that that is a key part of my uh, meal plan for the week is <laughs> Nashville style hot chicken and collard greens and slaw and uh, mac and cheese. I'm sure Matt Trask would approve if he was here today. He would. He, he gave a great presentation last month. So cool. it's on yeah, our and, YouTube channel. And, and we actually, uh, Longhorn uh, last year um, was like, hey, okay, you're, you're here. We're going to go here and, and see what you think. And he got the off the menu hottest uh, hot chicken that, that they had. Like, okay, this is fine. Like, All right. Well, that's a resounding seal of, of approval as far as I'm concerned. If somebody who bounces between you know, half a dozen or more different Nashville places is like, yeah, this is fine. I can't speak to the Southern food, but uh, Easy Tiger has the best, has the a really good uh, beer selection. So. Yep. Well, okay. and if you're, if you're from Boston and you approve of the beer selection, I think that is like seal of approval right there. The guy who used to do the magic tricks at the Legal Seafood Test Kitchen, um, Anthony Cabral, sent out a text a message the other day on Facebook saying that the test kitchen has shut down. How is Boston surviving? I mean, you have the barking crab, but you got to have the test kitchen for legal seafood. And by the way, Gene Babin, thanks for, uh, for him doing this. Uh, you're all welcome to join our virtual study, study program at Boston PHP. Fall lineup will be announced later this month. Um, it's a very worthwhile program. Matter of fact, uh, Sherry Cabral and I kind of stole that a little while having the, the incubator program that Gene started. And uh, thank him for still doing that. If you need to learn PHP or you want to get better, that is a wonderful, low-cost way to do it. Thank you, Gene. I, I, I moved the question to the answered column so that everybody could see it. So if you're, you're still hanging in there on, on Zoom, check, check the answered column. Or actually, I don't know if, how it works for attendees, but maybe you just see the answered column. I guess that's probably how it works. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, lots of people on YouTube saying thanks. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, and uh, Chris is like, all right, we got to get some hot chicken now. <laughs> and Ian, I think you convinced some people. So well, my job here is done. Yeah. 
Well, you all enjoy. I'm going to go out and get some text mix because I don't have a good hot chicken place here yet. So, <laughs> all right. Well, well, thanks very much, Dave. Uh, it's good seeing you again. Good seeing you all. Bye. Thanks so much, Dave. We really appreciate thanks. you being here with us tonight. Take care. Thanks, Dave. Good to see you. Take care.